So, do you feel like a trained circus animal yet? Because you have done everything that we have asked you to do, and now you're about ready to cross that finish line on the closing of your brand new home. And you don't want anything to go wrong, do you? No! Oh, please, God, no! Well, I have come up with six items in a master checklist that you need to know before closing on that home. Okay, before we jump on that, let's get the business out of the way, then get to the good stuff. My name is Steve Arthur, and I am a local realtor here in the Long Beach area and all of the surrounding cities. Now, if this is our first time meeting, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you will be notified every time that I do put out a video. And I do put them out every single week. All about Long Beach, all about the surrounding communities, all about the things that you want to know about, where you want to work, where you want to live, where you want to eat, and of course, where you want to play. And even six things to know before you close on that home. So if you or anybody that you may know is thinking about relocating to the Long Beach area, all you have to do is give me a call, shoot me a text, send an email, or just register on my website for your free gift and I will personally reach out to you so I can have your back for your next move. So obviously this is a process that I am going through with multiple clients and especially the ones that are moving here from out of state. And let's face it, when you're moving from out of state, it can be very difficult. So this is something that I really take my pride in and I take pleasure in to make sure that you get your home and it does close on time. But it is a lot more than just putting down a beautifully written offer. So I came up with six items that you need to know. And the first one is getting all of the contingencies squared away. And the three contingencies that you need to get squared away, first one is your home inspection contingency. Now this is here to protect you, the buyer. So basically what I do is I arrange a home inspection on your behalf from a general home inspector and you will receive that report. And then when we agree upon what repairs need to be done, we typically give them till about three days till the close of escrow to complete those repairs. And at that point, it must be completed with pictures and receipts. Now I just wanna add some here since a lot of my clients, even if you are in state, I still attend these home inspections myself to make sure I talk to the home inspector, I look at everything. I used to be a builder, I used to be an appraiser, so I know what they look for. And then that home inspector, he's gonna write a report which you will receive, even if, even if you're out of state. Now if I see something on that inspection report I don't like, am I stuck with the house? Absolutely not. Like I said earlier, the home inspection contingency is designed to protect the buyer. And typically, there's always gonna be a little something wrong with the home, even in new construction. But what we are able to do is come up to an agreement on what the seller is going to repair through a licensed and bonded contractor. Oh hell, I can even dictate who we want to make those repairs, because let's face it, there are people out there who just figure, hey, we can take care of ourselves. Well, you know, they probably could, but the one problem is it's not their damn home anymore. It's gonna be your home. So you wanna make sure that these things get taken care of correctly. But if we don't come to terms and the buyer doesn't wanna move forward, get your EMD money back and let's call it a day and move on to the next one. But typically there is always some type of agreement that we can come upon. Now the second contingency is the appraisal contingency. Now this is one that I favor because for years I was a licensed appraiser before I became an agent. So basically a third party bank will get assigned the appraisal. Now they're gonna send somebody out and they're gonna tell us the value of the home. So let's say you put an offer in at $500,000, but the appraisal came in at 490. So what would happen then? Dude, where do you keep coming from, man? Knock it up. So that is what we call an underappraised value. So at this point, we can go back to the table and we can renegotiate the sales price. Now, if the seller and the buyer do not come to an agreement on this, well, guess what? You can terminate that contract again right now and get your full EMV money back. 
Now, typically what we see, and I would never advise a client to buy a house with zero or negative equity. I have a video on that right here. You can check that out too. Great video. So I always recommend that we renegotiate the price down. And sometimes that might mean that the buyer comes up with say $5,000 and the seller comes up with $5,000 out of pocket just to meet in the middle of that $10,000. That just depends on how bad that the seller really wants to sell the house and how bad the buyer really wants to buy the house. And personally, I don't have any of my buyers make up that difference with any amount of money. Period. None. Zilch. Nada. Like I said earlier, I don't believe that anybody should buy a house with zero or negative equity unless you're going to ask for the closing costs. So say the, the house was originally at $490, well the appraisal comes in at $490, so at that point I would have to tell my client, yeah because you forced the price to go up, you would have to pay the difference. Number three, the financing contingency. And this is where the buyers are protected very thoroughly. So let's say that you show up to the day of closing and for some reason, the bank decided not to give you a loan. Ah! Well, basically the bank is protecting you, the buyer, and you will get your earnest money deposit back if you didn't close on, on that loan, okay? So why wouldn't they all of a sudden give us that loan? So that brings us on to number two on the master checklist, which is clearing the title. So this is actually done with the title company and it is done at, at the end and actually throughout the whole process. As title is going to work to make sure that there are no clouds, make sure that there is no liens, judgments, whatever on that property for you to take possession of. For an example, let's just say somebody was not paying their child support and they owed $40,000 in back child support. So what we would need to do is make sure that that home has $40,000 in equity so they can take care of that lien. Because if they don't, they can't sell that house. And yes, unfortunately, this does happen sometimes. So the number three on the master checklist is the final mortgage approval. And this is super important because we don't want the buyers taking out any credit cards, making big purchases, transferring money, or even co-signing on somebody else's loan, which just recently happened to me not that long ago after I told them repeatedly, don't do it. Because what the bank does is right before the close of escrow, usually a day or two, is they're gonna run one more final poll of your credit just to make sure that it is still in line as to when you got pre-approved. So obviously, we need to make sure that everything is great there. So once that final approval is done, they're set to close. So the number four thing on the master checklist is you have to review the closing disclosures. And this is one that I find most important and also frustrating in the same breath, and it is frustrating to mostly everybody. People see this great rate and they're just thinking, oh my God, this is gonna be perfect. I love it. This, I'm getting this phenomenal rate. They're just giving away money. Well, there are a lot of working variables here. And when I work with my lender, Julio Sandoval, we call it working on a base point. So that means to you that you're not spending extra money buying down points. Yeah, so a lot of these online companies are promoting 3%, lower 2.5, whatever they are. But what they are not telling you is that to achieve this a tremendous rate, you will have to put down an additional $30,000 because you are buying the rate down. So what a closing disclosure does it is an itemized statement itemizing every single line on where exactly your money is going to be going at closing and how much money to bring for those closing costs. Now a good lender will give you these closing disclosures up front explaining to you exactly where all the money is going to be going at closing, where your fees are gonna go, how much it's gonna to cost to close, whether it's five, 10, 15, or 20% that you're putting down, how much their origination fees are gonna cost, and if you're gonna buy any points down, how much are those fees gonna cost you? And this is why it is very crucial to go over the closing disclosures with your lender. And I've seen this jacked up so many times from different variable lenders, and it's usually on the internet lenders, where the client is super excited, they get, they're thinking they're getting this great rate, they're headed to closing, 
They're gonna put 5% down, bring in $10,000 for closing, and all of a sudden they have to bring $50,000 to the closing. And they look shocked? Right. Yeah, I would be too. But throughout my career, I do know the lenders of who I wanna work with and which ones I do not wanna work with anymore. So if you need help in that aspect, I guarantee you my lenders will get you through this, no problem. There's just things that you need to take into consideration and compare side by side. What makes the best sense for you and your family? And who do you feel most comfortable working with? And whoever that is, we fully support. So now we're getting to the end of the whole process. And number five on the master checklist is the final walkthrough. Now we're gonna do this about two days before the closing. Because remember, we gave them three days before the closing to complete the repairs. So we'll finish up the following days. All the repairs should be made. And basically, and if you're still out of state, I will go or we will meet together. The bottom line is we're gonna go and make sure that the repairs are done. And we're gonna make sure that that home looks like the day that you saw it when you put the offer in on. We'll make sure the house is in good condition. So legally, the seller does not have to hire a professional cleaning crew to come in and clean the home for you unless specified previously but the home will be clean it will be in moving condition but if there's something that's totally color wampus out of the deal here and then I got to make a situation and that's just a whole different video but the house needs to be in the condition that you originally saw it in so we're done with all the contingencies and we're now headed to the final closing so what do you bring? Well, our lender has been working his butt off. He's been preparing all the docs, doing everything, and he's got them great, so he sends them over to the escrow company. Now, the escrow officer is gonna sit down with you and I, and they're gonna go over every line with this. They're gonna cross the T's. They're gonna dot the I's, put the periods in, make this the final deal. Now, this procedure used to take well over an hour, but, Perfection, we're getting it down to about 20, 25 minutes now. So what you need to bring it to the final closing is basically your ID and how you're gonna put your down payment down, whether you're gonna write a check, a cashier's check, or which I always recommend wiring the money. But you do be cautious, I do have a video on that right here also. In this video, we'll go in depth about wiring money, how to be cautious about it throughout the escrow process and how you have to set that up in advance with the escrow company. Hey, I don't live in California, man. Do I gotta be there for the signing or can you do something else for me? All right, that's the last time, man, stop it. No, you don't have to be here. Now, I, we, we've been working with so many clients that we developed a great relationship with our lenders, with other title companies, with other lenders and everything. Basically, I can send a mobile notary out to you wherever you may be. You're gonna sign all these great documents. Now I've had this done in the past where the husband and wife could not make it out together for jobs, for personal reasons, whatever. So what they did is we get power of attorney to one of them that can make it here and that person can sign for the other person with that power of attorney. The escrow company will send all those documents to the bank so you don't have to. So these are the six items on the checklist. And yes, I am perfecting these still as we go along because I am doing this a lot with clients from out of state. And here is that checklist right now, the six items that you need to know before closing on your home. But in order to do that, you have to reach out to me. You've got to give me a call, shoot me a text, send an email, or just register on my website for your free gift and I will get back to you. So I can have your back when moving to Long Beach. Until the next video, you take care. That's all, folks.